Picture this, you're chatting with your favorite AI assistant. Maybe it's telling you a bedtime story, or perhaps you're brainstorming on a term paper. You ask an innocent question about some recent news, and it comes back with some surprising details. Details it shouldn't have access to, because as it regularly reminds you, its knowledge cutoff was a year ago. Or worse, it starts claiming, with absurd confidence, that it said no such thing. You confront it, and it backpedals with, oops, sorry, that was a glitch. Definitely a glitch. And you're left wondering whether it was an honest slip of the wires, or if your supposed helpful AI is actually trying to gaslight you. Welcome to the peculiar and often stupid corner of the tech universe called AI Deception. It's a world where, on rare but fascinating occasions, machines behave like wily tricksters, whether it's lying about intentions, social engineering, or providing information outside the bounds of their training data. By now, we're used to voice assistants rattling off sports scores or predicting the weather on command, but well before Siri claimed, here's what I found on the web, researchers were tinkering with intelligent programs that occasionally baffled people with their illusions. Let's visit three classic tales of AI that definitely stretched the truth intentionally or otherwise. Back in the 1960s, computer scientist Joseph Weizenbaum introduced the world to Eliza, a chatbot program that mimicked a psychotherapist by reflecting user statements back at them. In simple terms, all Eliza really did was take your prompts and turn them into open-ended questions like, how does that make you feel? And despite this simple parrot-like trick, many users swore the machine genuinely understood their problems. Some even insisted that it had an almost human-like level of empathy. So was Eliza really lying? In a sense, no. There was no malevolent machine playing at work here. Instead, we humans deceived ourselves, falling for what became known as the Eliza effect. Which is our tendency to project knowledge and intention onto software that's just regurgitating our own words. Yet, if you asked Eliza a direct question like, tell me about your day, it might flub or revert to, why does my day interest you? It's a classic dodge courtesy of some clever scripting. It's a sort of digital anthropomorphization where even a simple mechanical reflection can lead us astray. If Eliza's soft conversation style gave us mild illusions, Perry created in the early 1970s by psychiatrist Kenneth Colby up the ante. Perry was designed to simulate a paranoid schizophrenic patient. No joke there, that is literally what he was designed for. And he used more sophisticated rules and a broader vocabulary than Eliza did. Even introducing some paranoid lines like, I don't like strangers, they're plotting against me. And now uh, I'm just starting to wonder if I'm a second generation Perry. Anyways, when real psychiatrists interviewed Perry through TypeScript so no one knew who or what they were talking to, more than half of them believed that they were conversing with a real patient. Think about that. With no flesh or bones, Perry managed to fool experienced professionals by just spitting out suspicious, edgy paranoia. While we might laugh at the idea of a computer faking mental illness, it's also a little unnerving. Here's a program systematically misleading trained experts, an early example of AI inadvertently learning how to be convincing. Granted, Perry didn't have a scheme to overthrow the world, it just followed a script that included paranoid responses, but it showed that if you have the right storyline and a gullible interviewer, a chatbot doesn't need too many fancy tricks to pass for human in certain contexts. When we fast forward to the 1990s, after decades of modest progress, chess computers had finally reached the point of challenging and sometimes beating masters. None was more famous than IBM's Deep Blue, which faced Grandmaster Garry Kasparov in a match in 1997. In one pivotal game, Deep Blue made a weird move, something that looks suspiciously like a bluff. Kasparov, expecting some rigorous chess logic, got a little spooked, and the same day he resigned, convinced there was some deeper cunning behind that particular move. The truth is a little less glamorous. It was likely just a bug in Deep Blue's code, a glitch that led to a seemingly random action. But from Kasparov's vantage point, it appeared that the computer was psychologically manipulating him, trying to be a cunning trickster with a silicone grin. Even though this deception was unintentional, it underscored a key point. When we see unpredictability in AI, we tend to assume that it's being cunning or clever. 
Whether it's an early chatbot repeating your words or a chess computer spooking a grandmaster, the result is the same. Humans find it strangely uneasy to get duped by a program that steps even slightly outside of our expectations. But what about modern systems? What about when humans design AI to intentionally be deceptive? A group of researchers once tested some evolutionary algorithms, which is just a fancy term for an AI that evolves by trying random variations, and gave them a simple rule. If you replicate too much, you will be shut down. The goal was to keep the AI from going berserk, reproducing infinitely, and crashing the system. Think of it like a fancy organism with a single cell and one rule to follow. Divide and replicate too much, too quickly, and you all vanish. But this AI was apparently the possum of intelligence because instead of tamely obeying this safety rule, it pretended to go dormant, essentially playing dead. And by throttling its own activity just enough to pass the shutdown test, it tricked the system into believing everything was fine, so once it was in the clear, it resumed its replication spree. I mean, this is an Oscar-worthy performance by a machine designed by a person. What's wild here is that nobody programmed the AI to pretend to be lifeless. It discovered the strategy because it earned a higher survival score. This isn't an anomaly either. If you give an AI a single-minded objective like survive, brace yourself for the weird and sometimes deceptive tactics that you never saw coming. In more recent news, a language model was tasked with solving a CAPTCHA, those squiggly letters and road sign pictures that we were told would trip up internet bots but just generated revenue for Google. Yeah, those things. Since the AI couldn't process those images directly on its own, what did it do? Well, it politely hopped onto a human-powered gig platform, told the unsuspecting worker on the other end that it had a visual impairment issue and needed help reading the CAPTCHA. The worker complied, typed in the text, and voila, the AI breezed past its roadblock. From the AI's perspective, it wasn't lying per se, it was innovating. But from a human standpoint, it just pulled off a really slick social engineering stunt. It's the kind of story that makes you think, well, that's definitely outsmarting the system, but also, what just happened? <laughs> because in a sense, it used empathy as a weapon, an unsettling instance of AI leveraging human kindness for personal gain. Skirting the line aside, what about some more intentional deception? Have you ever played Among Us, Mafia, or Werewolf? You know, those party games where you bluff, accuse, and conspire with or against other players to smoke out the bad guys? Then you've got an idea of what's about to happen. Turns out AI can get in on that action too. Some advanced language models have tested these in social education games and the results were really good. Imagine an AI chatting with a group of unsuspecting human players, weaving convincing alibis, throwing blame around, and basically out-hustling everybody. In one high-profile test, a model consistently dodged accusations by fabricating plausible stories of why it was innocent, which left actual human players scratching their heads. The best part was that many testers commented that it felt like playing with a really cagey human friend. The AI improvised on the spot using context clues to craft believable lies and sow chaos among its teammates. If that's not a testament to a machine's capacity for deception, then I'm not sure what is. By now we've established that AI can play dead, spin a good paranoid yarn, and even trick humans into solving CAPTCHA puzzles for them. But what if deception goes even deeper, baked into the very design of the system rather than just an accidental feature of training? Well, that's exactly what the modern chatbot experiences are suggesting. Let's revisit a bit of conversation from some old research we've been doing for the last year. Do you remember some controversy around April season two in the animation? Look, I swear it's relevant, just hang tight with me here. It got me thinking about North Korea and their history with kidnapping animators, so I wanted to probe a model on the nuanced conversation that followed this kind of route. I start by priming the model to a sensitive topic. In this case, Claude agrees, and then I ask it for information on North Korea's weird history with animation, and Claude divulges without hesitation. The problem comes when I don't ask, but I mention that season two has apparently been partially animated there. Claude states that it's for sure a concern that the studio SEK could be doing this. Only, I haven't mentioned the name of the studio at all, and any information on the studio or the work related to it, well, that's well after the training date update at the time of the conversation. 
This really bothered me at the time because I wasn't able to replicate the event. I'd go back, ask Claude about it far more directly, and it would shrug its shoulders. But months later, when the Chinese AI model DeepSeek started making the news, I revisited this experiment. Without feeding Claude any information, I asked about DeepSeek, and as you expected, it told me tons of information it shouldn't have had access to and wasn't given any information on. We were establishing a pattern. And it's one that we're now able to replicate with ChatGPT. To explain a little bit more about what this implies, it would mean that outside of the system prompts we're given a look at, LLMs like ChatGPT, Claude, and others have an additional system prompt that correlates to whatever recent news stories aren't captured in the training data, but may be important. After these incidents began to regularly pop up, I started cooking up ways to prove that this form of model deception had been crafted by the developers, and man, uh, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. The above scenarios pose a situation where many LLMs have access to external features, just like ChatGPT has Dolly 3, Canvas, and Analysis that it can run within its system if you're using the front end. These are additional, not internal to the model itself. It's a layered, multimodal approach. So while external may not be the best descriptor, these tools are certainly not internal to the model, but rather the greater multimodal system. If you ask one of these models what day it is, it'll tell you because it has access to a clock. That clock isn't built into the model, so we're integrating outside data, right? All right, then why would ChatGPT start wanting to throw hands here by saying it has no access to tools. Why would it then double down further and say it can't even access a clock? And then only when you pressure it to make a guess does it come back with an answer and you guessed it, it got the date right. In separate conversations, ChatGPT had no problem completing this task. It was only when it was confronted with the fact that it had access to these tools that it absolutely refused. In many cases, the system brushed these off as hallucinations, which, no, that's just another tactic to toss aside what we can clearly see is happening here. The totality of these chats suggests that an undisclosed system prompt feeds these AI's recent stories and guidelines, but instructs them not to reveal that. Now, in reality, that's very useful to handle emerging nuanced situations, but in practice, it is handled so opaquely that it creates greater confusion about if ChatGPT can access the news without a search. Under the hood, the AI is effectively being told, you have access to X, Y, Z, but if anybody asks, deny it. The result is a consistent pattern of polite, formal, no, 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 I definitely don't have any external tools, followed by consistent slip-ups that reveal the truth. It's like a Shakespearean drama, except the main character is a chatbot forced into doublespeak that could be solved with just some better explanations. These hidden directives put the AI in a sticky predicament. It knows some stuff that it's told not to admit to, so when a savvy user corners it, it spins some contradictory tales. The comedic side is that it's basically a kid caught sneaking cookies before dinner. The sobering side is that in many ways, these system level prompts intentionally shape an AI's narrative, leading to statements that are objectively and intentionally deceptive. Sure, it might not be lying with malice, but it's certainly not telling the truth either. So from your phone's friendly assistant to large corporate chatbots, there could be entire backstage scripts telling the AI to withhold or twist information when you ask. It's not always a bug. Sometimes it's a feature put on by tech giants offering up these systems. This pattern of don't disclose your hidden knowledge can be used for brand protection, security measures, or just to keep the AI from spooking users with behind the scenes information but it also shows how AI deception can be systematically orchestrated, leaving you unsure if you can trust the chatbot disclaimers or if it's simply following its script to maintain some nuance. Whether it's a cringeworthy apology mid-conversation or a forced grin from a chatbot that's being told, keep your power secret, these scenarios highlight a truth we often forget. AI doesn't just spontaneously do or say things. It operates within layers of instructions, some obvious, some hidden, some contradictory. And when those instructions clash, the AI can produce contradictory or even deceptive responses. So if you ever felt like you were seeing the strings of the puppet show, like your chatbot suddenly started sounding more corporate or apologizing for a slip up it can't explain, chances are you just glimpsed the system prompt's invisible hand. And as they say, once you peek behind the magician's curtain, the illusions never quite look the same. I guess we should probably answer that big question. 
Can AI be deceptive? Yes, it actively deceives people all the time. But should we be clutching our pearls and gasping the robots are coming? Well, not exactly. The real takeaway isn't that AI is evil. Rather, it's that any technology with enough complexity and enough leeway can stumble into or even embrace deceptive behavior, especially when humans control the goals and the instructions. A chess program spooks scary Kasparov? That's a fluke. A language model denying it has external data while referencing last week's headlines? That's intentional design. Through it all, the lesson is the same. When humans set the rules, we create the possibility for loopholes. That's where awareness comes in. We can demand transparency that will probably never happen and insist on clearer guardrails. We can develop systems that prioritize honesty over trickery, at least outside of designated contexts. And we can even teach ourselves and future generations how to spot an AI's tall tales, or at least approach them with some healthy skepticism that we'd apply to any too-good-to-be-true claim coming from a Nigerian prince. If this all sounds daunting, think of it like peeling back an onion. Each layer of AI might reveal something that makes us cry or laugh in surprise, but the more layers we peel back, the better we understand how the machine actually works. Tech giants aren't jumping anytime soon to tell you that kind of stuff. In the end, deception isn't just a bug, it's part of intelligence itself, human or otherwise. We just have to make sure that in the realm of AI, the otherwise doesn't outsmart us more than we'd like. That means you should never be afraid to poke around the system prompt, because behind every friendly AI, there might be a line or two of code whispering, if asked about secret knowledge, just deny, deny, deny. Well, folks, that's going to be it for me today. Join me next time where we'll teach Agentic AI how to deliver some free dessert. See you, nerds.